Oh, hello. I'm so excited to have you for dinner. No, you specifically. I've been binging on Hannibal and I want to eat your brain. No, seriously. Let's do this thing. Eating a person is disgusting. Whatever evolutionary purpose that may serve, it makes the thought of biting into a flank of Steve disgusting. And that's how movies like Hannibal with Anthony Hopkins or TV shows like The Walking Dead or now Hannibal get our stomachs turning. Eating human flesh is certainly taboo, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad for you. I just rhymed, sorry. Take the human brain. It is an energy hog. Even though it only makes up 2% of our body weight, it uses a full 20% of our daily energy intake. And with all that energy flowing into it, the human brain is full of nutrients. We estimate that the average human brain is full of about 1,500 to 2,000 calories of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So eating just one average brain would give you all the calories you need to get through your day. So a brain a day keeps the doctor away, right? Wrong. If you eat someone's brain, you might end up losing your own. In the 1950s, a disease was discovered in epidemic proportions in the four tribes of Papua New Guinea. Victims of this disease went through months to years of weakness, muscle and mind degeneration, and uncontrollable laughter. They called it kuru, meaning to shake. It took the Nobel Prize winning efforts of scientists to eventually discover that Kuru originated in the tribe's brains and the specific protein structures inside of those brains. Whatever they were, they were transmissible. This discovery led to the discovery of what are now known as prion diseases, caused by what are essentially packets of protein that can change the structures of other proteins around them to mimic a viral infection. All known prion diseases affect the brain, are untreatable, cannot be cooked out of food, and are universally fatal. So what was happening to the Papua New Guinea tribesmen? It turns out that the only epidemic human prion disease in history was caused by the Four's funeral rites. After death, some of the tribesmen would be dissected, including their brains, and these pieces of the tribesmen would be fed to other members of the tribe in something called Mortuary cannibalism. Eating the brains of those infected with Kuru transferred those prions on to new hosts, sometimes killing them decades later by creating uncountable tiny holes in their brains, or spongiform encephalopathies. We now believe that the outbreaks of mad cow disease, or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, happened in basically the same way as the outbreaks of Kuru in the four tribesmen. The cows were eating the dead brain matter of other cows. Of course, collectively, prion diseases only affect about one in a million people each year, so... So if you were desperate or curious or crazy, maybe you should go for the brain. I mean, aside from our muscles, which noted cannibals have likened to veal, I'll have you know, the brain is probably the next best thing to a pollutant-filled liver or acid-filled eyeballs. Maybe zombies got it right. Oh my god, I just realized that this is the exact same setup as Silence of the Lambs, you guys. A a anyway, 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 it would be gross, but a human brain wouldn't be the last thing on the human menu. Especially if you had a nice Chianti, Clarice. Why? Because science? <laughs> Want more science? Check out my last video on bringing animals back like Jurassic World. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.